The late Steve Jobs is considered by many to be the greatest CEO of all time. He possessed the rare ability to focus intensely on his goals. Learn how developing a single-minded focus like Steve Jobs will change your life. More importantly, discover the spiritual prize worth focusing on above all else. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Steve Jobs died of cancer in October 2011, and his corporation at that time was the most valuable corporation on this earth, and many people said he was the greatest CEO ever. And I'd like to talk to you today about how he achieved that amazing uh, height in the business world. Walter Isaacson wrote, Quote, one of Job's great strengths was knowing how to focus. Knowing how to focus. He talked about focus, focus, focus just repeatedly. And he focused like a laser, as they often said. And I, I'll, I want to give you a quote from what Job's own uh, mouth. He, he said this himself. He said, I've, I've freed up some good engineers who could work on new mobile devices and eventually got it right when we moved on to iPhones and the iPad. This ability to focus saved Apple. It, this ability to focus saved Apple. Now, this is a, a dynamic power, and it created really the greatest company on earth, that foundational pillar was a major reason why it happened. So this is one of the foundational principles of success. I'll just read you what Webster says, Webster's Dictionary says about focus. It says, to bring into focus, to adjust the, the focal distance of the eye, a lens, etc., in order to produce a clear image, a clear image. To fix on one object, concentrate, focus your attention on study. In focus means clear, sharply defined. You have to sharply define it if you're in focus. Out of focus means blurred and not sharply defined. So that is ability that you and I can develop, and uh, we certainly do need to do so. It is a foundational reason for our success. But if it saved the Apple Corporation, just focusing, saved the uh, Apple Corporation, it must, must have had a great deal to do with building that greatest, most valuable corporation ever. Well, at least to this point. So anyhow, he had this ability to concentrate and focus for long periods of time. But we... We, uh, in learning to focus, and we certainly do need to do that, it's a powerful ability to have. Truly, uh, uh, just can move corporations in the right direction and make them successful. But the big question you have to ask about this is where do you focus? Where do you focus? Now, I want to talk to you about the ultimate success focus. And we should think about that because here you see the real key to all this is, well, where do you focus? We need to learn to focus, and that is uh, just an awesome ability. But where do you concentrate and where do you focus? That's the big question. I, I spoke about Steve Jobs in a, on a different subject about four and a half years ago, and we'll send you a transcript of this that program, and I thought it was actually on a very good subject that all of us should be interested in, and that is uh, becoming perfect. He had a, uh, a real desire to, for perfection, and that's a good subject to get into as well. It takes focus to uh, do that, of course, but he, he was perfecting computers, and he changed the computing world. He changed the world and world's technology in so many ways and moved this world forward in, in uh, technology. So there is a, a physical way to focus, but there also is a spiritual focus that we need. And his mantra was focus, focus, focus. 
But there is a, a question that we have to also understand, and that is, well, where is that focus going to be? And especially spiritually. I want to read to you a, a couple of scriptures here. This one in, in Luke 11, in verse 34. And here's what it says, The light of the body is the eye. So you can see all of this is, is, is based on a spiritual principle. All of that, that focusing that Steve Jobs were, was so masterful in is, a, is based on a biblical principle. One, or well, several scriptures in your own Bible. But notice what Luke 11 and verse 34 says, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. If your whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle does give you light. So if your eye is single, it, it's, go, it's going to just fill your body with light. You're going to see everything so clearly if you focus and focus, especially in the right place, spiritually. It's because of that focus, you see, that single eye, that you bring light into, the, into your life or into any working situation or any active, active doing and that type thing. But this is really the, the, the foundational pillar and can save your job, it can save your corporation if you learn how to focus. And the more important question, where to focus? Let's not forget that. Let me read you another scripture, this one in Matthew 6 and verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single, repeating that same, same principle, your whole body shall be full of light. Verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and money. You can't do both. So God is concerned about where we focus and how we focus. How are we going to focus to really be successful in physically and spiritually? How are we going to do that? I want to read you uh, just a little excerpt from the an, a commencement address that Steve Jobs gave at Stanford just a few years before he died. And he launched uh, into the, he, it was just a 15 minute speech, and that, that would become the most quoted commencement address of all time. There were 35 million viewers up to 2015 anyhow, at least that. 30, 35 million viewers on YouTube. A short address by Steve Jobs, and it was a smashing success. He knew how to succeed, and he knew how to focus. Let me read another excerpt. He said, I had just turned 30, and then I got fired. This is fired from the company he actually built himself. So at 30, it says, he said, I was out, and publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. The focus, what had been the focus of my entire life, it was gone. I was very, uh, a, a very public failure, and I even thought about running away from the valley, Silicon Valley, but something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. The turn of events of Apple had not changed that one bit. I had been rejected, but I was still in love. And so I decided to start over, that is, in love with uh, that, uh, what he did. Then he concludes by saying, Sometimes life hits you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. 
The only way to do great, great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, in other words, put your heart into it, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking until you find it. Don't settle. Now you have to keep your focus, but that he is talking about his physical business and about others pursuing business careers at Stanford after they graduated. But uh, I'll tell you, there is a... Uh, if you look at the physical there, it's a, it's a trillion times more important than what he was talking about. Though we do have to learn to focus, whether it's physical or spiritual, we have to focus and you have to love what you're doing. You have to love it. Now, God says of his own people in this end time that 95% of them don't love his truth. And so they lo they've lost their focus because of it. And they're going to be, well, great failures at, at best. And uh, some of them are going to, uh, at least 50% of them are going to repent of that, but many of them do not. One more scripture in, here in Ephesians 5 or 6 that I want to read to you, verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart. So you put your heart in it and, and, and really focus, singleness, as unto Christ. Now that's, that's like your job or your corporation, your company or whatever it may be, your small business. God says you really have to have a singleness of your heart. Have your heart in it and really focus if you're going to succeed. Let me read you again a quote about Steve Jobs, Time Magazine, about iPhone. He, he, uh, he said uh, after he had completed this project and built this phone, quote, I just don't love this. I can't convince myself to fall in love with this. And this is the most important product we've ever done. And we pushed the reset button. We went through all the zillions of models we'd made and ideas we'd had, and we ended up creating what you see here in, as the iPhone, which is dramatically better. It was just painful because we had to go to the team and say, quote, all this work you've done for the last year, we're going to have to throw it away and start over. And uh, then, they, of course, they got iPhone right. He scrapped the whole work for a, a whole year's work because he was so focused on getting it right and making it as perfect as he possibly could. And he scrapped this year's work of the engineers and all that, and that gives you an idea of how focused he really was. And we need to learn very much to be that way ourselves. We need to learn to focus if we're going to succeed. That is essential, and it's just a really the pillar, foundational pillar of success. But then we have to get into the more important subject of, well, where do we really focus? Where do we really focus? And then we get into the, uh, the ultimate success focus. Here is a quote from, uh, well, another quote of his. He, he purchased Pixar, another, a, a corporation that created Toy Story and other animated movies. He said that uh, when it wasn't working and it really wasn't being successful, he, he said to the, the people there the, that worked there, he says, I got everybody together and at our heart we really are a content company he said, let's transition out of everything else. Let's go for it. This is why I bought into Pixar. That is why most of you are here. Let's go for it. It's a higher risk strategy, but the rewards are going to be much higher, and it's where our hearts are. So he said he, he wanted all everybody to go and, and focus on what was in their heart, what they, hearts, what they really wanted to do. Now, 
Your heart has to be in it. Your heart has to be in it or you're going to lose your focus. That is just a given. So we all have to get a right focus, but make sure it's uh, the right focus spiritually. Steve Jobs also uh, said uh, that he'd, he'd studied a Mercedes car and, uh, and he looked at the Mercedes and said, that's what we have to do with Macintosh. That is his computer, and that's what that's what we have to do. Now, it was a great a great design, and that you need that. And Steve Jobs said, "Look, I want to make a dent in the universe." He had great ambition, a great ambition. He said uh, he always quoted uh, Wayne Gretzky about you don't skate where the puck is, you skate where it's going to be. He had vision, and he, he had focus on that vision, and he stayed focused on it. And he stayed focused on his ambition, which was right up there to the uh, making a dent in the universe. But look, God says, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you the universe to rule it and beautify it if you will just get your spiritual focus here. Now that's, that's something to really think about. If your eye is single, single now I want to go back and... Uh, and put that scripture I gave you, first of all, in, in the context that Christ was giving it to them. And these are Christ's own words. You will see it in a red letter Bible if you have one. We must put the single, the, uh, the single eye into the context that Jesus Christ was talking about. So notice this uh, ultimate success focus. The most amazing scriptures, I think, that... Uh, that you'll just find just about any place in the Bible. And it has a, just, a, a, just a, 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 an incredible overview of what you need to really, really achieve the ultimate success and the ultimate focus that you need in life. And it will bring you phys the physical and the spiritual blessings. Notice verse 19 of Matthew 6. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In verse 22, notice this, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. So this is the, what I read to you in the beginning. The, the light of the body is the eye, and your eye must be single. It must be focused. But what was Christ really talking about? What, in what context is he, he stating this? Where must the focus be? Not on treasures on the earth. It, that's not where the focus must be. You, you're going to be given those, but he's telling you how to get them his way. And something far more valuable than you, things, any things on this earth, any treasures on this earth. I mean, there's no comparison. God wants to give you the entire universe. He says that in Hebrews 1 and Hebrews 2. He's going to give you all things. He's going to give you the entire universe, the Moffat translation says. If you will get your focus and be the success that God wants you to be. Notice verse 23. But if your eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Isn't, isn't life more than just meat and raiment and things? Isn't there something more in this life that is 
something much, so much more wonderful than just things. Food, drink, clothing, cars, buildings, beautiful buildings or whatever. It's just trivia, trivia compared to what God wants to give you. It is nothing in comparison to what God wants to give you. Now, that's, that's what Christ is talking about here. I want to show it to you in detail, but, it, but I just wanted to focus especially on what Christ said about, look, life is more than that. Life, this, this, this is real abundant life, and Christ says that isn't even life. It isn't even life. It's just a little period of time on this earth. That isn't life, and then we die. But he says now, life, life, forever and ever and ever, it's more than that. I mean, after all, we're talking about physical things, but we're also talking about eternal life. Life, God just wants your life to go on and on and on and never end. That's his goal for you. That's his goal, but where is our focus? Where should it be? Where should our focus be to receive the ultimate success focus? Verse 26, notice this, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Aren't you better than the, the, uh, the birds that God feeds? and takes care of them. Verse 27, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take the thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of those little lilies of the field. Have you ever looked, noticed how beautiful they are? And what, what color they add to this earth, more than all the success and wealth that Solomon had. Then he says, verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is, is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Don't you think He'll clothe you if He'll do that to, uh, to the earth and beautify it with the lilies of the field and, and the, the birds and all of that? You're, you're much more than that. Your life is much more than that. Won't He take care of you if He'll take care of those little birds and lilies? Now notice what He says. O, o you of little faith, then verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek you first the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Isn't that amazing? That's just a dynamically amazing verse. Seek first, focus first on the kingdom of God. And God says, if you do that, I'll give you all these things you want. I'll give you the wealth. I'll give you the treasures. It'll be added if you'll just focus first on the kingdom of God. Now, there are very few people on earth that believe this or will even consider this, but look what God says in this most inspiring scripture, perhaps, in all of the Bible. These are Christ's own words. Focus, 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 but focus on, on this, the kingdom of God first. And he says in Matthew 4 and verse 4, well, I, I want, life is a lot more than bread. It shouldn't be just bread, bread alone. But you should live by every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, every word. And then you're going to be focusing on and having the most 
happy, joyful, successful life that a person could even imagine because you're fulfilling your purpose. You're filling the very reason for your, your being here on this earth. And that's what we ought to be focusing on. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. The late Steve Jobs is considered by many to be the greatest CEO of all time. He possessed the rare ability to focus intensely on his goals. Learn how developing a single-minded focus like Steve Jobs will change your life. More importantly, discover the spiritual prize worth focusing on above all else. Very few people become successful in life. Most don't know the true definition of success or what to do to obtain it. Request our free booklet, The Seven Laws of Success, to get answers. No difficult circumstances or disadvantaged upbringing should ever doom a man to failure. However, there is no get-rich-quick scheme for success. It takes consistent, focused application of these seven laws. The vast majority of the wealthy and famous throughout history have properly applied the first six laws, but the seventh one eluded them. You can know the spiritual dimension to real and lasting success that they never discovered. Just order our free booklet, The Seven Laws of Success. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ delivered a message about the coming kingdom of God. What happened to that message? Request our free book, The Incredible Human Potential, to find out where it is today and why it remained hidden for so long. Understand the awesome purpose of human life and the way to world peace. Science and religion haven't been able to answer life's biggest questions. The incredible human potential will. You will also receive a free copy of the program transcript, Become You Perfect. The late Apple founder, Steve Jobs, focused on perfection in his craft. Learn how to become a perfectionist like Steve Jobs and emulate the ultimate example of perfection. Request Become You Perfect today. All our literature is available free of charge with no cost or obligation to you. Order now.